free float from SLM Solutions, uh, basically supportless metal 3D printing. This is pretty badass, but very technical. Let's try to make it simple. Let's go back to basics. Okay, so this is also kind of a maker's update, but I'm going to try to simplify this because, well, SLM kind of just changed the game for metal 3D printing, but also kind of didn't. So they're saying support free revolution, except the image that they're using has support. Now, okay, right. It's way less support than you would normally be used to, but you know. Anyways, if you're wondering what metal 3D printing is, we actually did a whole video on other types of 3D printing. You can actually find it right over here. We're going to card to it. So if you're wondering all about metal 3D printing, go take a look at that video and then come on back here and we will have some fun. But basically, TLDR, bed of metal powder, freaking laser, metal parts, magic, and apparently a little bit of Salt Bay magic on there to make it all happen. And SLM has really been making machines for a long time. They make the materials and they're even a service provider. So if you are looking to get metal 3D printed parts, they may not be a bad option, but hey, look around just to let you know, metal 3D printers are in the class of machine of if you have to ask, you probably cannot afford it. So just, you know, understand. They're so high price-wise for the machines that you just have to request a quote. So, you know. They are claiming that this new software is going to have a big impact on the industry and the uses of additive manufacturing. And I kind of have to agree here. Now, their video, which we'll throw some clips in. We also have improved finish on the surfaces that we print and higher density, which gives us less porosity in downskin areas. The space the supports usually take out is now free for a better pot orientation or in some cases for more parts to be printed. There is also a significant reduction yeah. in the internal being able to add part. more parts into your build into really that simple. little so area is awesome. File like you've always done. It is kind of cool. I don't think it's all that innovative. And that's because, well, they're kind of doing stuff that everybody else has done. They talked about their uh, brush recoding system. Key enablers such as the optimized interaction of the laser beam with a powder bed, That's just cool. our market leading gas flow and management system, and our mostly frictionless recoding mechanism, which. The mostly frictionless recoder management is probably most of what they're using here to be successful. I'm not 100% sure, but if I had to hedge a bet, it's going to be the recoder. That's on other machines. They talked about the way that they're able to print at all the way down to like a 10 degree angle. Up until now, the 45 degree rule, so to speak, um, has always been around. So that means whenever your part angles at an angle of lower than 45 degrees, you would have to add supports. And this is no longer necessary with free float. We can now print overhangs to free float with low angles of 10 degrees in long range geometry and five degrees in short range geometry. Which is nuts. There are not other machines out there that can do this, okay? That's where they're coming in. They're doing some sort of magic. I'm guessing it's in software. I'm guessing it's from very, very, very low friction recoder. That would be my guess. Now we have a fact sheet here, of course, we will link to this down in the description for you as well, but this kind of goes through some of the key talking points. So let's go through it together. This is all the issue. So supports with regular 3D printing can be a pain because you got to rip them off. But when your supports are made of metal, you can't just rip them off. You're not the Hulk. Where are you? So normally you need to break them off with cutters, die grinders, and then it needs to be, you know, sanded and all that. TLDR, lots of touching. And when humans touch things, things start to get expensive, right? Your average engineer that has to work on these parts, probably making a fair bit more money than I am, or at least I hope they are. And uh, yeah, the more they have to touch that part, the more one time that part takes, two, the higher chance it has for failure, and three, the more you have to either charge yourself, your customers, or whatever government entity you happen to work for. So 
a lot going on there where if you can reduce the amount of touch points needed from humans, you can really reduce your overall cost. Well, what a business is like. Faster productivity, lower costs, less man, woman, less time, less personnel time. Yeah, yeah, all those things, check, check, check. Yes, your current design freedom is limited because your support structures always need to be factored into the design equation, which means on parts like what they show here, you'd have so much freaking support material, it would be a nightmare. You'd have a lot of waste. You'd have probably more waste here than you would have actual usable material. So yeah, if you can have more open space in your machines, that enables you to throw some other parts in there, you know, nest some stuff together, things you normally couldn't do with metal 3D printing. So this is kind of a big deal. And of course, increased material usage because of the current support structure. So, and by the way, I really like this fact sheet. I think it's put together really well. And again, support lists showing me supports. And yes, this is way, 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 way less than it would have otherwise. Look, free float fact sheet where they're saying basically zero supports. I mean, literally the support free revolution. It's not support free. It's minimal support, an ecosystem of benefits, right? Drastically reduce or eliminate supports, freeing up space for more parts. We talked about this retrofitable on most systems, which I think this is pretty much their key. Now, what is that retrofit going to cost? I don't know. Probably not free, but that's a big deal. If I have an old SLM machine or an older SLM machine, I don't want to have to spend another million plus to get this new technology. I'd love to be able to maybe spend 50 grand, 100 grand, I don't know, to get the upgrade retrofitted onto my machine. I presume this might be something on the recoder side and software because otherwise there's really no easy way to like change out the laser system, change out the heater system. That's all very difficult. The recoder is probably one of the easier things for you to replace inside of metal 3D printer machines. So something to know. And of course you're saving metal powder, you're increasing productivity because unlike MSLA printers and, and more like SLA printers, the laser doesn't expose the entire layer all at once. It has to go back and forth, right? That time adds up every single layer. And if I don't have to print a bunch of support material, that means your productivity can go up. You can unlock new design potentials, less time post-processing, which I honestly think this is probably where all the money is going to be saved. Less scrap, I mean, eh, whatever, the client's paying for it already. Uh, and no PhD required. Let me get in front of the, one of those machines and then I'll be the decider. I got a master's degree, so maybe there is no PhD required. I wanna get in front of your one of your machines, SLM. Let's find a way to make this happen. Uh, send me a, I don't know, DM me on Twitter or something. <laughs> um, user friendly now I think the big thing here it is more user friendly is what they're going for considerably more user friendly than standard metal 3D printing which I would bet that this is if there's less support material and less BS to deal with that directly translates into more user friendliness right you can utilize just slight improvements medium improvements or maximum possible reduction of supports improve service finish and overall part quality now i don't know why they put this here because realistically if high is just as good as low why would i go with low now i know in my head at least in my head the answer is because this part here will get you considerably higher accuracies because you have more connection points to the build service, keeping it from warping. Just like we talked about in FDM 3D printers, ABS specifically, we did a whole thing on materials, material video right here, card to it. ABS tends to warp as it gets cool because it shrinks. Well, metal kind of does the same thing, but on a way worse scale. We have heard reports of failures on metal 3D printing causing the actual build plate to buckle. These build plates are not made of glass, ladies and gentlemen. These build plates are not made of plastic or PEI. These build plates are made of the same metal that the 3D printer is printing in. Think about it. So my guess here is that they're reducing all non, uh, you know, they're reducing all superfluous while still maintaining the materials that are required and support materials that are required to keep the part within spec. Right, the less support material you have, the more likely you are to have a warp, right? That's why with 
uh, ABS back in the day, we used to print on rafts, which were sacrificial. We knew they were going to warp, but if the raft warped a bunch and your part was okay, then we didn't care. We were throwing the raft away anyways. So I think this is kind of what they're getting at. And hey, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to get subscribed and, you know, leave us a like and just lightly ring that notification bell for me because these videos are cool. We think you're going to like them. And I want to do more deep dives into this technical stuff. I'm trying to keep it, you know, pretty simple for you guys. But if you do want to hear hardcore technical, let me know. And I can actually bring on some metal experts in upcoming podcasts, maybe where we can talk about this technology and why they like it and why they don't. So, you know, let me know down in the comments. Do you want us to have metal experts on here? That'd be cool, I think. So Sam O'Leary, the CEO, says today... You can design bolder, design freer, design with fewer limitations. Today, you can work faster, work more productively, work better. Today, you can go to the place that will take you to the next level. Now, that's disruption. Every day, we are pushing the limits for you, our customers. But only together can we transform the way we build. Let's do that together. Let's go there. One crazy freaking powerful message. I don't know if that's an off the cuff thing from him, but whoever wrote that, if that's written, they need a raise. That's a very impactful last page to read. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. We've got just some more of their basic machines on their website, like, like machines, like, whoa, machines. Machines that have staircases. Machines that have staircases. Machines that have something where you can stand under it. I don't know what it is, but machines that have staircases. Look at that, 500 by 280 by 850 millimeter build envelope. For that huge of a machine, quad laser. If you want to learn about machines with multi-lasers, we did talk a little bit about it on a video about far soon. We can card to it right there. Let's read more about this. I'm just curious to see it. Oh, loading my experience. Cool. Ooh, oh, 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 wait, what? That's cool. I dig that. All right, let me just keep scrolling. Jeez. Oh, wow, their whole website's interactive. I mean, I'll give them credit. That's kind of cool. Big parts. Yep, I like big parts and I cannot lie. Uh, yep, we know that. 20x faster. I don't know what this machine does, guys. 600 by 600 by 600. One of your biggest. No, 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 that, that's... Yeah, that's an 850, but it is only 280 wide. Yeah, 600 for a build volume for this movie. No, I'm not signing up for your newsletter. Stop it. Optimize for large parts. Oh, that is just so cool. Wait, really? 12 lasers? 1,000 watts each. You have 12,000 watts worth of lasers. I think Dr. Evil might want to come reach out to you guys. Dr. Evil, you should reach out to SLM. I really do love this website. Oh, that, that's fake. Uh, but really cool, definitely fake. This is absolutely fake. Uh, but really, really cool. Oh, they can go up to an 80 micron spot size, or then they can, uh, change their lens to go to a 160 millimeter spot lens. Hey, I'll give them credit. It's a really nice website. We should have a website like this. We don't have a budget. We don't sell machines that are so expensive that you need to get a quote for. We don't actually sell basically any 3D printer. We sell one brand of 3D printer. Cool stuff. And of course... This machine is going to absolutely work with this brand new, new free flow technology. TCT Magazine did an article on it, but there's not too much to be seen here. A lot of what people are picking from is from the free float um, uh, live stream that they did. We'll link to that in the description as well. So you guys can take a look at it if you want. It's about 10 minutes long for the main stream, which is just a marketing video. And then they go into like an active Q and A, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and you know, a, a really nice way to see them reaching out to their customer base. So I'll give them credit, but, um, yeah, it doesn't alter orientation or model geometry, which is nice. So you can basically print your same stuff with just less material and less human touch points. It's basically what you want. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think this is really cool. I would love to handle some of these parts to see what it's like with all the supports and to see specifically to me, their, um, their low, medium, and high uh, support reduction and how that affects part geometry 
uh, in terms of warping and accuracy. I'm very curious to see that. But let us know in the comments, if you had access to a metal 3D printer, what would you make? I, you know, I would probably make like, well, I'd probably make a new, some new vertebrae. And uh, then I'd probably call up Organova for some new discs. And I would make myself the Wolverine out of Animantium. Except I, I don't have like, really high healing skin. Quite frankly, I bruise like a banana. So, ah, uh, you know, I don't know. I'd probably replace my back with titanium uh, vertebrae, maybe put some new knees in this bad girl. You know, uh, change out the old worn and torn parts, and get something nice. And by the way, that is basically how a lot of new implants are going for hips and knees. They're being 3D printed, which is absolutely cool. If you guys want to see more about that, let me know and we'll dive into that subject. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, leave us a comment again. What did you do with the metal 3D printer? And uh, what do you think of this? Do, do you like this technology? I think it's absolutely dope. I would love to see way more of it. Anyways, stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Goodbye, gravity. Hello, support free printing. God, I wish I could say goodbye, gravity, hello, a back that feels good. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoy this and want to learn more about the technologies in 3D printing, we got a video right below me where I go into uh, some slight detail of some of the other technologies that exist out there. Don't forget to get subscribed. Make sure again to leave us a comment below. And uh, don't forget, Patreon coming soon, so your name could be over here. I'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, down in the comments. Take care.